Well, I'll give you this. I was wrong about attrition. It's really not bad. It's catastrophic. I was editing some gameplay for this video and realized that the process was boring as hell and I had no desire to do it. Plus, uh, all this editing would increase the amount of time I'm spending on an already extremely late video. So just go ahead and put this on your phone, put it in your pocket, and go get something useful done while you listen. If you've got chores to do, they're probably not that much less fun than playing this game. If you'd rather just download an mp3 so that you don't have to keep YouTube running, um, I'll put that in the description. Before we get into the stuff that I really like about Battlefield 5, let's address attrition. I want to focus foremost on attrition's health system, which is certainly the most glaringly obvious obstacle between this game and enjoyability. My effort to separate the discussion of health and ammo is deliberate. I consider the two very separate in their purposes and effects on gameplay. Is attrition skill-based? Does it add the skill back to Battlefield that was apparently missing from the last five titles? Apparently, the attrition apologists believe that it does. So why does the entire no percent of the competitive player base enjoy attrition? The most positive reaction I've ever seen from that demographic is at best apathy, though the majority of the responses seem decidedly negative. I have a theory here. It's pretty basic knowledge that one needs to first attain a basic understanding of something before he can really begin to appreciate skill in that field. It's hard to realize just how good professional athletes are until you've applied your own person to the activity in question. A grandmother, similarly, is probably not going to appreciate the exhibition of skill involved at a professional level in CS, though a dedicated, the worst player of the game, would certainly be able to. With that in consideration, it should be pretty self-explanatory when I say that it takes a certain level of experience to be able to appreciate the kind of cognitive work, often paired with good technical skill, that's really necessary to be successful at a shooter game. The attrition apologist has failed, simply, to attain the overhead needed to even begin to understand these processes, much less engage with and execute them. As a result, he fails to see the actions of good individual players as having skill. They're beyond the ability of his current skill level to understand, something that can be remedied only with sufficiently sweaty self-application, and perhaps a modicum of innate ability. Great Battlefield 3 players, like Punch Roll into the Sun, used positioning backed by technical skill, one without the other was never sufficient, to strongly influence the course of the match. And the attrition apologist, crawling worm such as he is, lacks the perspective to understand such elevated concepts. Instead, he groups all such players, which have probably done more to advance a team than he ever has or ever will, into the lone wolf basket. After all, if great individual actions of skill are no longer skilled, he can then justify his own lack of ability in this area, and still consider himself a contributive player. Attrition is one of those mechanics designed to the perspective, at the risk of sounding dramatic, of the lowest slug under the meanest rock. With the attrition apologist locked from more advanced forms of team play for lack of technical ability, or in some cases cognitive, he instead insists that the only form of team play worth supporting is the most basic and superficial form, that of throwing resources back and forth. And because that doesn't actually happen in Battlefield, running from supply crate to supply crate, which somehow makes me useful again. Lacking the ability to see any farther than this most basic form of interaction, he then smugly insists that anyone who dislikes attrition must, therefore, dislike team play. If you, redesigns, if you redefine skill to pressing 3, it is possible for the attrition apologist to consider himself a good team player. Health attrition, to put it very simply, is horrendous. When I played other classes other than medic, it was a constant and painful struggle. Yeah, I can adapt. I can adapt just fine. I can keep running back to supply crates because god knows friendlies aren't going to help. I'm not fighting this because I can't play the game, I'm doing so because I have adapted it and it's simply not an enjoyable gameplay experience. The depth that the supply crates add to the gameplay loop is literally just a fetch quest. You know those filler quests bad RPGs have where you have to talk to an NPC and they want you to go get an item for them? It's like having to play one of those in between all the actually fun stuff. It takes you out of the fun for no mistake of your own, but because you have to go get an item. It's not well-paced downtime like you find in good horror or survival games, it's just a pointless little timeout from playing the game. Me? I play the game to shoot people. I guess other people play it to run to supply crates. 
it seems like there's a strong correlation between those who enjoy this system and the people who never live long enough to actually run out of health and ammo. So while it's possible to adapt to the new system I already have, and I'm playing pretty well, better than I have been in Battlefield 1 because of the movement system, which I think is better, I just fail to see how it adds any beneficial dynamic to the game. It creates annoyance, especially if you're solo, and this is at the cost of inhibiting what team play options were already there in prior titles. It's impossible to act like team play wasn't powerful in prior titles. Everybody is familiar with clan stacking. And you could have a much smaller group of players, like a single squad, consistently win 64-player games in Battlefield 4 if they were good and they worked well together. Team play always, 100% of the time, beat disorganized in titles prior to the existence of attrition. So if team play was already powerful, why screw over the people who liked playing with each other creatively in an attempt to make casual players, who won't care anyway, appropriately sweaty? Because I, I think the attrition apologists are right. It does force your squad to stick together. I can't say to my mate, you assault that point, I'll watch your back so you don't get flanked. I can't say to the guy, my SMG squad mate, to go down the hill and frag some people while I play Overwatch with the SLR because I can't heal. I can't have one squad mate flank and plank at people while I push up a choke point because he can't sustain. I say can't in these situations and perhaps it's a little bit strong. Certainly we have been doing this in the beta. It's just very inconsistent and unfun. Unfun is the key here due to attrition. Sorry, dude, I can't support you anymore. I have no ammo. Or I just lost that frag because I had 45 health and there was nothing I could have done about it. It constantly just feels like we'd, as a squad, be better off just zerging mindlessly in a blob everywhere. That's not particularly fun to play with or against. You've taken with attrition this complexity away and replace it with a binary decision tree revolving around ammo and health. It would not take long to write a script to create the perfect medic bot squad mate because that's apparently the extent of what is considered team play. And anyone who thinks that this gives a role to the medic class that wasn't aware it didn't have one is safe to disregard. I don't know what their deal is, but somehow their head isn't screwed on quite right. Such a person has almost certainly never immersed himself completely in gameplay in a serious manner and doesn't have the depth of experience required to understand just how broken medic heals have always been. There is no possible way by which I can equivocate here. There's no way to objectively prove this to you either, just that if you hold this view, you need to play more and more seriously until you do understand it. Further, disregard with even greater alacrity those who think that one health pack that which you get in the beta after a fetch quest is enough to invalidate medic, for the same reasons except more. Ironically, they did manage to go a correct direction in allowing all the classes to revive. All the classes can revive, but medic can do it better, a principle that should be extended to to health and ammo. All classes should be able to heal, but medic can do it better. All classes should be able to resupply, but support can do it better. Personally, I do not mind the extended revive time, even with medic, though the body's being unrevivable after many events is certainly an annoyance. Ammo behaves differently to health. If you play a close quarters weapon like a submachine gun or an AR, you'll never run out of ammo if you're halfway accurate, for two reasons. First, capping points inevitably puts you close to the resupply crates. Second, the ammo packs people drop on death can sustain you really easily if you're not taking 12 bullets to kill every guy. Not once did I run out of ammo when I was playing with the SDG or as medic. I don't even bother to grab the extra pouch when I spawn, I don't bother playing that quest. It's just not needed when I can get ammo at the first point I can. Unfortunately, if you try to play a ranged class, you will run out of ammo in about 2 seconds, especially given the low mag capacities of SLR. You don't exactly have a lot of reserve. Further, these classes playing a more supportive role cannot readily pick dropped ammo or visit supply crates frequently without taking themselves out of the ranges that they are really good at. The two default excuses attrition apologists have in response to legitimate concerns about low ammo is to insist that the, the individual is either not playing the objective or not being accurate enough. Once again, I'll restate that I never ran out of ammo when I was playing with the Sten or SDG. But uh, when I tried using the Gewehr 43, as it is properly designed to be used at mid-range, it was a bit of a struggle, and I kept having to run back and forth. That wasn't very fun. It was like having to do work in between bouts of having fun. Both of these attrition factors are supposed to improve team play. Subjectively, from my experience, it has not. My experience in having support players and medic players resupply and heal me has been 
no more consistent than in prior titles. Until we have actual telemetry in this regard, I can't make an affirmation or negation of this statement. I suspect that player behavior has not been altered. Should player behavior be unaltered, as I suspect, apologists will say, if team play isn't approved, it's because we did attrition hard enough because of regen and self-heal. It's like communism. If it didn't work the first time, it's because you weren't dedicated enough. You, you should try again. A post on Reddit, I think, summarized the issue pretty well. Playing this game is like doing work. It's like raking the leaves and mowing the lawn. It's a lot of boring stuff that you have to do before you can actually get onto playing the game. I'm sure taking health and ammo when you spawn is immersive and interesting for maybe the first half of a time, but for how many times per game thereafter is it actually worth doing it? it really gets old pretty fast. A lot of this game feels like work and not the fun kind. And before you say, you just want to run and gun. My most played game after Battlefield 4 is Civ 5, followed by Factorio and RimWorld. I have no problem with games that make you think about your actions, and some are literally micromanagement simulators. I just like actual choices rather than make work. The gunplay is quite enjoyable. Microbursting is once again possible, to appease the normies and boomers, but it's no longer effective. Really, the optimal way of using your gun hasn't really changed a whole lot since Battlefield 1. It's just that bursting fast isn't as obviously punitive as it was before, and long bursts are far more difficult. I'm not really sure that anyone has had enough time to evaluate the gunplay. It's probably the closest we've ever been to Battlefield 3. When I was speaking to the weapon designer, he agrees with me that Battlefield is probably the best Battlefield title, period. I'd like to remind everyone that it wasn't exactly difficult to play Battlefield 3. I'd be surprised if anyone's come close to consistently maxing out any weapons DPS. Personally, I enjoyed shooting things in this game, something that I can't really state for Battlefield 1, with the exception of a few guns. There seem to be fewer annoyances like aim punch and weapon smoke in this game, though muzzle flash is annoying, which makes the weapons much more usable and enjoyable compared to Battlefield 1. Will I be buying Battlefield 5? No, not in this state. The inevitably incomplete state of the game at launch in combination with attrition has pretty much inserted this. And the atmosphere and aesthetic of the game, I mostly just like to shoot people, but art direction doesn't escape me, and I do notice it and appreciate it. And Battlefield 5's art direction as well, well, it's kind of terrible. Be honest with me, does anyone look at the Asian whammon in this game and not think to themselves, wow, that's pretty stupid? 